launch of that we game? We knew we were going to have a lot of bumps. You know, that's a difficult development. A lot of new systems and yeah. things like that. Hey, we're going to go try this new thing. And anytime you're going to do something new like that, you know you're going to have your bumps. Uh, you know that a lot of people might say, that's not the game we want from you. This is not the type of game that people are used to from us, and we're going to get we're going to get some criticism on it. Yeah. And a lot of that very well-deserved criticism, um, given what it is. And But we knew, we felt strongly, this is a game we want to play. This is something we really want to do. And all of the games like this, whether it's us or somebody else, you can go back and look at them. There's a period once you launch. It's not how you launch. It's, it's what it becomes. And, um, you know, can't be prouder of the team that's worked on it. They've worked tirelessly. And, and it's really turned around. It's a, a fabulous game and an incredible community around it. Gentlemen, E3 shall soon be upon us, and there are several very, very interesting titles on offer. But that's not what this video is about. As can be evinced from the previous audio clips, God Howard, none other than God Howard, has revealed some especially succulent and interesting information to the gaming world. And when you actually think about what he has stated, in this video interview on IGN from which these clips were extracted, it's actually stunning and startling. Because what he has conceded, among many other things in this interview, is that the new gaming industry standard is effectively releasing alpha state or pre-alpha state games and then working on them later and hoping for the best that through some patchwork changes, patches in general, that these will be playable and enjoyable. And both he and the interviewer cite various games, the launch of which one might say was a bit rocky, and eventually they overcame this rockiness and they became good and appreciated. And that's the way to go about things. Think about how stunning that is as a statement about making games, publishing games, releasing games. Now, we've all known this for quite some time. The idea that games should be released polished and more or less complete, possibly with a few odd patches here and there to iron out bugs or what have you, that idea is long gone and has been long gone for quite some time. But the difference here, the critical difference here, is that God Howard, none other than God Howard, simply states that as a basic, given thing, because that's just the way it is. Now, it doesn't help his cause, mind you, that for years I've noticed he has a very odd musculature in his face. He really struggles to smile, so there's something very robotic and off-putting about any personal interaction with him based on observation. But I really think that's an astounding statement, that in the realm of AAA, not universally, obviously, but more often than not, it's acceptable to release shitty, unfinished games and then just run with it. We've seen it with Anthem. We've seen it with Destiny 2. And, of course, it goes without saying, we've seen it with Fallout 76, which he claims is dramatically recovered, not to my knowledge. I think most people still regard that game as a total piece of shit. But neither here nor there, it had a horrible launch and proceeded to make many mistakes and screw up repeatedly, and yet he's claiming that that's acceptable and that's okay. The reality is, is as far as I know, it hasn't really recovered. It doesn't have an awesome community as he claims it does, and it's not acceptable when the state of a game is essentially alpha or pre-alpha, and it's deplorable, and people can't play it to enjoy it. There are limits, and I think this is the critical stage that we're at right now in the gaming world, above all with AAA titles, because think about it, there are limits for everything. So let's say, for example, you're in a difficult life situation, there's only so much stress you can take until you reach the boiling point where you flip out or, or you lose it. I think the same is true with consumers. Now I've gone on record, and I'm probably including this too, is saying gamers are the worst consumers out there. Very little self-restraint, very little ability to boycott, to be selective about what they're getting, especially when it's something that they really wanted, but it turns out that it was either not very good or poorly developed or there are some other limitations on it. And generally speaking, people still run with it, myself included, unfortunately. But 
I think the power of God Howard's statement and the facts and reality on the ground of, say, Apollo 76 tell us that there are, in fact, limits. That diehard fans, if the game is abysmal enough, if it's horrible enough, as Fallout 76 was, or in the case of Anthem, which basically doesn't exist anymore, give or take a player here or there, that, yes, there are limits. And that standard of releasing unfinished games and saying, well, we'll just fix it up down the line and maybe in a year or two it'll be okay, that is not a standard that everyone is going to find acceptable. It's one thing to have a game with some bugs or needing some patches or you're going to add DLC, and DLC is a separate issue, but again, neither here nor there. It's another thing to release a game that's basically unplayable, that's not fun, that's so buggy, even if you really, really tried hard, you couldn't enjoy playing it for the life of you. And that's effectively what's happened in Fallout 76, what's happened with Anthem, and probably what will happen in the future with numerous games, unless this trend changes. Now, what I see happening is that this could be the golden opportunity for studios and developers and publishers to come together and say, look, we're not going down this route. We're going to do it differently. And as a consequence, people are going to appreciate them more. They're going to sell more games. They're going to do better than the companies and developers that say, look, we're just going to release this in alpha state and we'll work on it later. Because as the previous year and this year have shown us, people do have their limits, even the worst consumer in the world, the gamer. Die-hard Fallout fans, even those guys, were disappointed by this release. And I'm hoping in the future that, as a consequence of this, either that developers that we know are reliable, such as CD Projekt Red, and more recently, Larian Studios, which has been announced, is working on Baldur's Gate 3. And you can probably hear in my voice what I think about that. That's just incredible. Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3. Larian Studios, Divinity Original Sin 2. Great, great RPG maker. But they release finished products, and they try to polish them. It's not that the initial product is unpolished or shit. It's they, they add little bits and pieces, they add functionality, more features. That's not the same thing as releasing an alpha state game and saying, oh, this is okay, we'll just fix it a year later. So three years down the line, it's a good game. Because with the current state of affairs, three years down the line won't be good enough because no one's going to play it. Anthem has more or less been put on ice. Fallout 76, okay, God Howard says it has a, a great community. I don't know anyone who plays it, and I know a lot of gamers. And I've looked at some data, and the data don't suggest to me that it's a super popular game. So people are going to pay the price. And my hope is that you either get good studios like Larian or CD Projekt Red who do not want to release unfinished crap, pushing the boundaries, making sure they release really, really nice polished products that maybe need a fix or two. Or even better, they do their thing and everyone is trying to catch up because they realize that the stakes are high and they can't afford long-term to release pieces of fecal matter. The attitude of God Howard throughout this interview was very nonchalant, very, eh, you know, we, we had some good games that got nines and Metacritic, and sometimes you don't always get those high scores and reviews, and it's just something you have to live with. But the guy, maybe it's his inability to smile, I can't figure it out one way or another, really projects apathy. No desire to rectify this. He's just saying, look, the industry standard now is to release shitty unfinished games, and we're just going to run with that because that's okay. And let's be honest with Bethesda in general. As we all know, people who've played Elder Scrolls for a long time, Bethesda now has a long track record in history of releasing unfinished games and letting modders fix it. I mean, we all know about the unofficial Skyrim patch. You know that one? The one you have to install in order to have a good experience, at least on PC? That's God Howard. That's Bethesda. That's making these games. We're going to put something out there, and the modders will fix it. And to some extent, apparently, I've only heard this through hearsay, 76 was somewhat fixed by modders, but it's just really lazy. And 
it might be the time for Bethesda to, to fall. And I don't mean that with any malice, but indifference, the callousness you could see was coming across in this interview with God Howard made it very apparent that he was okay. I mean, yeah, he admitted it was a shitty release, but that's okay because they're working on it and improving it, and that's what's important. Gone are the days where you release full games that don't need numerous patches. Because, hey, the modders will fix it. We do have Skyrim unofficial patch, right? So there you go. They'll do everything. I think Bethesda is in deep doo-doo. I think Bethesda is going down a route that they will regret. And I really think that they believe that their reputation alone will be sufficient to save them in the end. And I don't think it will be. There are good studios out there. I've already named two. And there will be more to come. And these studios will release highly polished games. And they won't be pieces of shit upon launch. And... At that stage, people are going to just forget about Bethesda and what they do. Sure, some loyal diehard fans might not, but I really think Bethesda needs to turn it around. And I'm actually thankful to God Howard for being completely honest and revealing this interview and saying, look, we release pieces of shit, and we try to fix these pieces of shit and make them less fecal long term, but ultimately that's the standard and that's what we're going to do in the future. Mind you, he did mention something to the effect of making the next Elder Scrolls have as much longevity as Skyrim does, right? Ten years or some absurd number to that effect. Well, the reality is, something he didn't mention, but it's obvious, the reason why Skyrim has longevity has nothing to do with what they did, other than the fact that they allowed Skyrim to be moddable, but everything to do with the fact that mods exist and modders work on them to this day, improving the game, adding new experiences, and with new software available, you can play with something like 500 mods installed without too many problems. And that is why Skyrim, which he cites, has so much longevity. He says something to the effect of, the number of people still playing Skyrim is staggering. No fucking shit, Sherlock. It's because... All these people that weren't getting paid engaged in passion projects and made the game a million times better than the piece of shit that you released in the first place. Anyway, I don't want to ramble too much on the subject, but this was an important thing to cover because most of us are gamers, and the reality is, is that God Howard was staggeringly honest with us and just told us what the game plan is. So rest assured, Starfield, the next title they're working on, will also be an unfinished piece of shit that will require work from Bethesda and, of course, modders to work on it. And whenever Elder Scrolls Six is released, if I'm still alive, and by the gods, it is going to take a long time for that to be released because their primary IP, the one that most people are excited about, that can be put on hold forever in their eyes. Well, that will also probably be another piece of shit that will require a whole bunch of modding and improvement. So... There you go. Anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in. I think this is one of those moments where it's important to talk about certain events in the gaming industry, and I'm not talking about E3, but events such as God Howard coming out of the closet, so to speak, and saying, hey, look, we release shitty games, and we try to improve them over time. Of course, again, he couldn't be honest enough to simply say, and we also release shitty single-player games that modders have to work on for years to improve, and that's where the longevity comes from. No, you couldn't do that. Anyway, gentlemen, thanks for tuning in, and as always, if I'm still alive, I will check you out at a later date, and hopefully more to come. God's watch over you all. Bye-bye. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.